Hi guys, Rachel here with the Cackling Moon. This is going to be another tarot book club discussion. We are going to be discussing chapter five. So if you are, um, if you're gonna follow along with the discussion, um, make sure you have your book out. Um, the 78 Degrees of Wisdom. We're going to be part one, chapter five, which is the chapter Turning Inwards, The Search for Self-Knowledge. Um, this was a lengthy chapter. <laughs> I, um, I finished it yesterday, last night. Um, I had to do it in like three parts. It was a lengthy chapter. There was multiple cards we read about. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we read about six cards. We did, um, was it six cards? Let me see. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, 8. I'm missing one. I'm missing strength. Strength is <laughs> in my deck somewhere. I forgot to take her out. So um, we're going to be reading from strength through um, temperance. And I don't have my strength card. And I left the deck in the other room. So sorry, guys. I'm going to have to pull strength from. <laughs> we're going to have a little version of her. So... Um, first one we're going to talk about is strength number eight. I have notes here for what I'm going to talk about. This way I don't get lost in my notes in the book. Um, I will do my best to, to let you know where I'm getting this information from. But um, hopefully you are reading along and you are making your own notes and stuff in your own book. So strength number eight. Um, first thing from her is she is the, the search inward cannot be done by the ego. So when you're looking at strength, um, you are looking within yourself or you're looking within a certain challenging situation or another person. Okay. Um, but in order to be successful with the strength, um, you need to be able to see outside of the ego. You need to let go of the ego and the ego is your mind, right? The ego is your rational, maybe not so much. I mean, it's, rational can be also of the heart, but your ego is like your mind needing to see physical proof, the facts, the, the rules, the, the policy, the outline, right? That's what the ego is. And you have to step outside of the ego. You have to step outside of values that maybe you've learned as a child up into the age of whatever the age you are when you go through your first strength experience. Um, as children, we are usually raised to believe whatever our parents tell us is, is what is true, right? We are, we are trusting of what our parents tell us. We're trusting of everything that is told to us in school by our teachers and whatnot. Um, but the strength card is like starting to think for yourself and you're starting to dig deep within yourself to find truth. Um, so she's kind of like that, that first, first point of it, I would say. Um, I wrote down confronting hidden feelings and desires. So in order to, um, to tap into the strength essence, you need to be willing to confront hidden feelings and desires, things that you've tucked away throughout the years of your life that you don't want to necessarily touch on because you don't want to um, open a can of worms, so they say. <laughs> um, a lot of times we suppress things about ourselves because people told us it was wrong or be, they told us it's not the way to, to be or that's not appropriate at, our, at that time and, and point in our life. So we tuck things away. But as we go through life and as we get older and, we, and our minds are developing and we're starting to think for ourselves more and this and that, we're, we're literally stepping into um, a, more, a more mature version of ourselves. Um, we start to slowly remove the layers of those things that we've kept hidden. Um, and so it takes a lot of strength to do so. It takes a lot of power to do so, a lot of initiative, personal initiative to want to go into shit from the past. Um, so a lot of us, you know, we have a lot of skeletons in our closet. Nobody is perfect. Some people have more than others. Um, but it takes a lot of courage to want to unravel that part of yourself because you're vulnerable. Um, 
I wrote down taming the beast with a question mark. I always refer to the beast as the lion um, or the lion as the beast. And I always say taming the beast. Like that's one of my, my, my favorite phrases when I see this, the, the strength card, because I don't see her as she's not battling him. She's taming him. She's teaching him from peace and love and patience. She's taming a more, and the beast can represent a, 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 an extension of her or you, right? Um, and it's, it could be your teaching, your loving with love and care and joy and, and positivity, um, rationality, a little dose of rationality, right? Um, you're teaching an otherwise wild version of the self how to love or how to be in a relationship or how to be successful with the job or how to do this and how to do that. Um, so I also see the strength card as that is taming your beast. We all have beasts of bestial version of ourselves, um, a version of ourselves that craves, um, that, that craves to be wild basically. And that is meant to be wild. Um, but it's also, I feel like I like this goes hand in hand with the way we're raised, some of us, not all of us, but the way that some of us are raised in the church. The church teaches you that this certain ways of, of living your life is evil and bad <laughs> or certain ways to be is evil and bad. And I feel like the strength card comes through is like if you step away from the ego, a.k.a. you step away from like dogmatic belief systems, you have to retain your beasts. And you have to kind of give your beasts these things which would otherwise be looked at as sinful or evil or wrong. You're re-loving them. And, and that's what strength is. Like she loves and nurtures and cares for. And not in a... she's she's she, Obviously she's loving and caring and nurturing that, that lion. She's not afraid of him. Right? She has no fear of him. She's showing love and affection as a form of teaching. Um, as a form of taming because a lot of times when you like, like people who work in public settings with people retail one of them <laughs> dealing with customers who are irate and who are angry it doesn't do any good to combat that whole anger and, and um, irritedness with anger and frustration right so if you're calm and collected when you talk to these people they will relax a little bit more. So that's what that means. <laughs> There's a whole lot more with the strength chapter, but um, I'm gonna jump on over to Hermit because I had a lot to say about Hermit. I really, really, really enjoyed the Hermit chapter. Um, so the Hermit, this is going to be page 77, which I love, 77 is a significant number for me, so I freaking love it. Um, the Hermit is a teacher or a mentor. That's what hermits are. Hermits are teachers and mentors that come into our life to guide us through situations. These could be looked at as your spirit guides. These could be people, prominent people in your life, teachers, professors, um, um, friends, family members, adults that you look up to, people you look up to, people who have a, some sort of significant value in your life. That is what the hermit is. So hermits are people in our lives. Um, the hermit is also an extension of yourself as well. Your own personal desire to be your own teacher or to, to your desire to learn about something. Usually it's spiritually spiritual or something dealing with deep within. Like I said, we're starting to break through with that. And so as we go into the hermit, we're deep going deep within. Um, I put there also bad people <laughs> in a question mark. Um, for example, when I was, okay, so 2012, I had my spiritual awakening I, and all of that, right? And then in 2013, I was heavily involved in Tumblr in the tarot community. That's how I was building, like practicing my tarot readings. I was cyber bullied on Tumblr. Um, and I went through a lot of drama with people on Tumblr. And, um, but I look at, now that I like can look at this perspective in a different way, I see those people, my the people that were cyber bullying me and whatnot, <laughs> they were in, 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 in some form hermits to me. They were teachers or mentors to me in a way, in a weird twisted way. I know it could be hard to see it this way, but 
if it wasn't for the cyberbullying and all of that, I wouldn't have been prompted, at least I don't think I would have been prompted, to delete the original tarot name I was going by and then giving birth to the cackling moon a month later. If I wasn't cyberbullied and dealing with those people, the shadow, right? Those people are from the shadow aspect. Would I have been wanting to create the cackling moon? Would the cackling moon even exist, basically? So I was really thinking about that. And I was like, you know what? Negative people, shitty people in our lives can also be hermits. They're a hermit experience. They are teaching us something about ourselves. And... Um, and you, so you can't discount the negatives. And that's really important with this journey of tarot is that we don't discount, we don't forget about or ignore the negative experiences, the negative people in our lives because we learn so much from those two. It's not everything is just cupcakes and lollipops. <laughs> not everything is positive and happy. Um, we learn so much about ourselves with the dark. So that's that was a huge life lesson for me and it was amazing to see it in that way um the, the hermit is also finding our own way spiritually and free of dogma so those of you guys who were raised heavily in the church um like i was um when we step away when we if we make that decision to step away from the dogmatic belief system to step away from the traditions and the family values and this and that i don't resonate with that i want to go look for what else is out there. I have questions about life. What else is out there? What else do I want to discover about myself? That is the essence of the hermit. Um, and many of us go through, go on that journey and that is what we are searching for, right? We are being led by a higher desire or our higher selves leading us or, or whatever the, whatever it comes out to, to find answers and to see what else is out there. That is the essence of the hermit. Um, I also put with, to withdraw from the outer world to, in order to heal ourselves. So um, I wrote a list. I put substance abuse slash rehab, retreats, spiritual retreats, spirituality slash religion, meditation slash dreaming. So for example, a really good example of this is let's say you deal with substance abuse, whether it's alcoholism or drugs or whatever. In order to, and not, not everybody will align with this, but generally speaking, in order to heal from major years and years of heavily induced substance abuse, most people need to separate themselves from that environment, right? Obviously, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's, it's pretty impossible to heal from something when you're around it 24 seven, right? So usually most people will retreat from that. So that's how I'm seeing it. I'm, approach, I'm approaching it in that aspect. Um, so you go to rehab or you, you move out of the experience. If you're dealing with a negative toxic relationship or a toxic friendship, you have to literally remove yourself from that experience, from that environment in order to start your healing process. Um, and then I guess, I think for, for some people, not everybody, but for some people, once they've completely healed from that situation or that substance abuse or whatever it is, usually, and not everybody, but usually people can kind of creep on back into that similar environment, um, and not have it affect them. But a lot of people choose to permanently, you know, separate themselves from it. So whatever works for you, but... Um, I see it as in order for, for the hermit card, like the hermit is, <clears throat> the hermit is a hermit for a reason, right? It's alone, not to be lonely, but it's like choosing to separate from a certain thing, people, group of people, whatever, to do personal healing or personal work or personal, <laughs> you know, examination. <laughs> um... I also put down the hermit. So when you when you list the cards in order in rows of seven, which was someone had brought that to my attention in the, the Facebook group that we're in, um, because the book talks about the card above it, the card to the left of it. <laughs> 
So I guess what you do is you take the fool away, but you put um, from the magician through the world. It's you put the cards in rows of seven, so or rows three rows, in um, seven cards per row. And so wherever the hermit lies and whatnot, their high priestess is like, I don't know if she's like right above him or whatever. I can't remember what the book said. But I wrote down the veil is no longer hidden. So the, the veil with the high priestess was was you weren't allowed to go see what was beyond the veil. Like you, you had to go through work with your intuition, blah, 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 blah. With the, with the hermit, the, the veil, there, there's no veil with the hermit, right? Because he's in it. <laughs> because you are having a willingness to look within and to face your ugly. Um, with the high priestess, you are aware that the ugly is there. I'm aware that there's these dark things in my life. I'm aware that there's, you know, skeletons in my closet. But with the hermit, it's like, I, I know you're there and let's get into it. Let's, let's dig in. Let's deal with this. So that's the difference between the hermit and the, the high priestess. And the book talks about it more in detail. But I thought that was really, um, that was really important to me. Um, I have a shit ton of notes in here. Um, about the hermit a lot of notes um there's a couple things that i want to tap into um to reach enlightenment you must first go through pain and darkness of the self so to be enlightened to deal with you know with all of that you have to be willing to go through the dirty right you got to be willing to go through the darkness in order to 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 see the light at the end of the tunnel um there's no free pass there's no free pass to get through to get through shit to get through life. Um, everybody has to go through something, right? Some people go through more and multiples. Some people don't. But there's always something you got to go through and deal with, and you, there's just no free pass. And I love that. I appreciate that because I feel like it just shows you take initiative in your life. It's like I'm going to go through it and deal, and I'm, I'm no longer going to ignore these skeletons in my closet. I'm going to clean it up, and I'm going to deal with my mess. You're owning yourself. <laughs> um, the hermit is also psychic, psychic development, spiritual awakening. Um, things are no longer hidden. The hermit is has the willingness to see through the veil and move forward. So when when you are in hermit status. You're no longer hiding. You no longer want to hide. You want to deal with shit. So if you pull the hermit in your cards, you're going to get ready to focus on a lot of stuff. Um, I could go on forever with this card, so I need to stop because we're already 17 minutes in. Um, the reversals of the hermit, I highly recommend that you guys read the reversal meanings at the very end of, of each section for the cards um, because they're so good. The hermit reverse can indicate a fear of other people, anti, you know, to be antisocial, leading to phobias and paranoia. Um, simply meaning that at this moment, the person needs to become involved with other people. So if you are a hermit in reversed, you, like a hermit upright is not a negative, right? A lot of people think it's like loneliness and stuff, but it's really not. It's to be comfortable, to go on a date with yourself, to be comfortable to be in public by yourself is what the hermit is. In the reverse though, it is the crippling anxieties that prevent you from being alone or the fear of all of that so it's really interesting to see it in that in that perspective um hermit reverse can sometimes indicate a peter pan attitude to life the person hangs on to basically meaningless activities or else imitates childlike enthusiasm so it's like you don't grow up <laughs> people who don't want to grow up people who don't want to deal with stuff people who don't want to um you know, people who are involved with activities in, in life that, that it's not teaching them anything or it's not helping them develop or grow or become a better version of themselves. Th these are just people who simply, they just have no desire um, to take initiative. And it's, it's a fine line because it's like, I, I'm totally all about embracing your youth and embracing, you know, having fun, going to Disneyland. If you want to go to Disneyland, like if that's your thing, I'm not a Disneyland person, but... <laughs> If you're a person who like you want to get away and enjoy, you know, the, the things of your childhood, that's one thing. But if it's like if it is actually re like causing you to not grow up <laughs> or to not face reality, 
it's basically her to me hermit in reverse are people who who have a lot of bullshit to deal with and they allow other people it's like you guys all clean up my mess because i'm not worthy enough of cleaning it myself thought that's hermit in reverse to me that's problematic to me excuse me while i blow my nose okay so next we're going to talk about um the wheel of fortune yeah so the Wheel of Fortune, number 10, this chapter, literally, this is chapter or page 883, sorry, page 83, goes into mega details about the symbolisms. I'm not going to get into that in this discussion. I'm, <laughs> there is so much. I mean, it talks about everything. So I highly recommend the Wheel of Fortune chapter just for its symbolism. Like it just blows your mind. But a couple things about the Wheel of Fortune. Um, it is the random turning of luck, destiny God chooses for us. So it's it's kind of like shit is going to happen, right? right? Oh, sorry. Shit's going to happen in our life, whether we like it or not, is basically what the Wheel of Fortune is. The Wheel of Fortune is like, I'm going to keep on spinning. Life is going to keep on going, whether you like it or not, whether you like what you are being handed or not. Um, when the Wheel of Fortune comes up, this, these are people who question, why does this happen to me? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why Why are we going through this? <laughs> people who question the whys on, constantly um, is, is the Wheel of Fortune. Um, how and why things happen. Changes in the circumstances of one's life. So the Wheel of Fortune also indicates changes, major changes um, of, of your life. Things happening that create other things to happen. It's like a snowball effect. That's how I see the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I used to say like in my readings, the Wheel of Fortune is luck. It could be good luck, but in some cases it could also be shit luck too, you know? And then that causes the why complex where people ask, why is this always happening to me? And it's also kind of goes hand in hand with karma. And the Wheel of Fortune does talk about karma a lot in the chapter um, where it's like, Shit happens for a reason. I'm a true believer of karma. If you're going to be a crappy person, you're going to get crappy results. So I feel like um, <laughs> that the, the, the Wheel of Fortune also resembles that. Um, there's also a bit here. So I, I put a little asterisk. Whoops. I put an asterisk to make sure I talk about it. Um, so in pa on page 85 at the very top of the chapter, um, it says... Um, why, why and how does gravity work? Going further, we find that fate is also an illusion, a dodge to cover up the fact that we, with our limited vision, cannot see the interconnections between all things. Oh, well, we say, it's fate, a meaningless statement because we cannot understand the meaning. Things don't just happen, they are made to happen. The power to shape events, to give life, and form the purpose to the universe belongs Mallory tells us to the Holy Ghost dwelling in the physical world as a presence within the Holy Grail, the Ace of Cups. In the same way that the Shekinah physically dwelt, dwelt within the veiled sanctuary of the Temple of Jerusalem. So it goes into a lot of other things. Um, but basically, I highlighted that first bit, um, which is fate is an illusion, a dodge to cover up fa the fact that we with our limited vision cannot see the interconnection between things. <clears throat> and then I, and as a side note, I wrote, is fate an excuse? Um, so you know how like people will say, oh, it's fate. That's why it happened. It's fate. That's why it's happened. It's because we can't, we don't have answers for it. It just happens. Um, and that's where that whole thing is, is, the whole concept of God choosing your fate for you or God choosing your path for you or like let God have, take, like, let God take the wheel, like that kind of thing. Um, I think that's where that comes from. It's like, we don't, we can't explain for ourselves why things happen. They just happen. But I also believe that there's, there is like, fate is a deal. Like I, I believe in fate. I believe that there's things that happen because it's meant to. But I also believe that there's things that happen because we're shitty people and we are just receiving shit back. You know what I mean? Or if you're an amazing person, you're going to receive amazing things back. So I do believe in like that exchange as well. So I thought that was powerful. Um, 
I also put an asterisk, oops, this, this, all my notes are flying everywhere. I also put an asterisk towards the middle of the thing. I'm trying to show you guys where I'm at because some of you wanted to know kind of like what pages I was on and stuff. Um, but it says our short lives narrow our vision to such a minuscule portion of the world that life appears meaningless, which is so powerful because I was just like, the world is old. The world is old. Thousands of years. And we only live barely a hundred of it, right? We barely a hundred. Some people not even a hundred. Some people not even like, you know, half of that, unfortunately. Um, our, <laughs> so our like understanding of it all is so tiny. It's a tiny little piece. And it, I feel like it, like it says, it narrows our vision on the whole thing. And so people who complain, like, why does this happen to me all the time? It's just, to me, it's like, why worry about that? You know, like there's so many bigger, better things to, to worry about and to do. It's just like deal, roll with the punches, deal with it. You know, I was one of those people that would complain about things. And like now, like I, like if you could step outside of that and see the bigger picture, you'll understand a little bit more. So I just, I, I don't know. I really like that part. Um, okay. The other big thing about the wheel of fortune is to achieve the ability to see the silver lining of negatives in your life. So that was a side note that I put, um, for page 86. It got into it a little bit towards the bottom. Um, but I wrote that as a side note to achieve the ability to see the silver lining, lining of the negatives in your life. This is actually a lesson that I give a lot of my clients in readings is that, um, when you go through shit in life, Everybody does, right? There are people who will constantly dwell on the crap that they went through and never grow from it, right? They never grow from it. And then there's the people who go through the hermit mode. If I could grab him. People who go through the hermit mode who decide, okay, I went through that horrible thing in life. Let's investigate it and let me see what I learned from myself in that situation when you can find the silver lining in an otherwise crappy situation you can discover so much more about yourself not only are you healing from yourself and healing from that that crappy situation but you're also learning about yourself in another way and you're accepting that hey bullshit happened to me in my life but it didn't tear me down it tore me down momentarily but here I am again to survive and live and keep going and I really really like that and I really appreciate that <laughs> the rest of the chapter for the for the the chapter but the section for wheel of fortune pages 88 and 89 go heavily into the symbolism which I highly recommend you guys read um but I want to get into justice now so justice is um all about balance okay the scales equal perfect balance of past and future, okay? To see the truth about ourselves and life, she's not blindfolded. So notice that she's not blindfolded. Some tarot cards will reveal the justice is blindfolded to kind of display that she sees, she's not like being unfair and all, and all of that, like she's blindfolded to everything, but <laughs> this justice is not blindfolded. She's allowing herself to see the true perspective of herself. So a lot of the tarot was like self-examination kind of stuff. Um, oh, that's all I wrote for her. <laughs> So let's go into it. Let's see if I put any side notes. Um, okay. I wrote down, we can only control so much and with and roll with the punches with the rest. So I, I, another reminder of the justice card is that you want to, a lot of times we want to control where we're headed in life and what happens to us in life, right? The wheel of fortune, shit happens. Sometimes we have to deal with it. Well, you got to roll with the punches. Sometimes you just have to go through it. You have to experience it. And that's like another thing of like reaching another level of achievement within yourself is that when you can see a, a bad crappy situation, yes, it sucks to go through it, but it's also life changing. Um, when you can accept it and you can embrace that, you know, you can go through a bad situation, be upset, cry about it or whatever, but then you grow from it and you see the growth in yourself in it and you see the value in that crappy situation or that crappy person that is leveling up. 
And I feel like that's also what justice is about. Um, I put down to come to terms with the positives and negatives in our life experiences. It's, it's like you're not, ex you're not saying I'm okay with that person taking advantage of me, but you come to terms with what you, what came out of that experience? What was birthed out of that crappy experience? And I have so many examples, but I can't get into them right now because <laughs> this video will be too long. Um, but justice to me is it's fairness within yourself. You are being, you are seeking justice for yourself. And to me, there is no greater justice for ourselves than being able to look at a person who, who wronged us in our life and to see why that person did it and to forgive that person for doing it because we finally see the silver lining of, okay, you ruined my life, but if it wasn't for you ruining my life, I wouldn't have discovered blah, 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 blah about myself later in the future, two, three, two, ten 10 years ago, 10 years later. You know what I mean? That's what, that's what I'm trying to explain with this. So really powerful, um, really powerful. And then the justice in reverse, those meanings too, is like dishonesty with yourself and others, unwillingness to see the meaning of events and shows especially that you were missing some opportunity for a greater understanding of yourself and your life. A justice in reverse is like saying, I went through so much crap, woe is me, everybody pity me, I'm never growing from this situation. Those are, that's a justice in reverse. Choosing not to heal and to grow and develop and to develop and to self-examine from those crappy events because you just choose to want to receive pity from it. Um, that's a and, and that's rough, you know, that's that's like the hard truth of justice in reverse, but it's true. Um it could also be legal, illegal decisions, um unjust decisions, treatment, bad treatment from people. Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, that's the gist of the justice. Really, really, really powerful card. It also talks about her combination with, um, I think it's um, the magician and the magician and someone else. Like there's two cards that combine to make the justice. And I don't know, it, but it, it was really good. So anyways, um, Hangman. There's so many cards to talk about. <laughs> so Hangman, um, he's peace of acceptance peace to literally to be at peace in all in an otherwise chaotic experience he is the the ultimate like you've done the work you've gone through it you see the shit the justice is like you're seeing the shit that you went through and you're seeing the positives from the shit so once you are able to achieve that area of yourself to to see that and to be in that mindset which not a lot of people can get to that point because it's, it takes a lot of hard work and humbleness and like literally it's it's rough it's hard. But when you can achieve that the hangman status is like you could see shit hit the fan in your own life. <laughs> and you're like, "Well, that really sucked, but this is what I learned from it. Like you have a whole different perspective on it. And I and I can totally vouch for this because it took me about 13 years to finally like get over what happened to me when I was 14 years old. Um, I think I did a video about it uh, somewhere, somewhere in, in my list of videos. Um, but I was able to see the silver lining in my situation. And I was able to see why what happened to me happened to me. And I was able to see the beautiful things that followed in my life, even though it was like years later, that wouldn't have happened had I not gone through that stuff. And so now, <laughs> shit can happen to me in my life, or I could see shit happen to someone else. And I'm able to give them that wisdom. I'm able to give them that like, hey, I know it really sucks right now, and you have every right to be upset and to fall apart and, and this and this, but something amazing is going to be birthed from that and you're going to see it eventually it may not happen for a year two years 10 years but it's going to come full circle that's hangman status that is like you're able to sit in your poison <laughs> and still survive um i wrote down um awareness of the self he so the the hangman is aware of who he is. He's already gone through all of this stuff, right? Especially that hermit. 
um, he, the hangman has a better understanding of who they are, who you are. You are accepting of yourself. You are accepting of who you are based on your true nature. People who don't accept you for who you are because that you're evil or you're bad or your decisions that you make in life are horrible or whatever. People who don't understand you but you understand yourself, that is hangman status. You're comfortable with yourself. You're comfortable in your own skin, in your body, and in your beliefs. Hangman is powerful. Like, I was very like, wow. I really resonate with this hangman person. <laughs> I also wrote down to be your true self, even if it is chaos. Even if shit's hitting the fan, you're at peace. Because you know you're going to get through it. Because you know you went through so much worse before. And you survived. That's hangman status. There's so much more I can say, but that's what I'm, that's all I'm going to say about him. <laughs> also, when you turn him in reverse, he looks like he's dancing. Um, the reversal indicates the inability to get free of social pressures. Our awareness of life always remains second-handed, never a direct experience, but only a series of stereotypes like the person who models his or her behavior on the order of parents and the actions of movie stars. That hit me hard when I read that because I was totally a hangman in reverse forever. Those are people who true who choose to portray themselves as the way that other people want to see you as. And you're not being true and honest to yourself. So you're it's a negative. And so it's that hit me hard when I read that. I was like, oh my God, I was I have been and I still have tendencies of being that way. And it, I really resonated with that. So I was like I needed to read that part. <laughs> okay, let's dive into death. So we have death number 13. It um, starts on page 101. The death. So what I wrote is the ego resists the idea of death. So again, we're going to be talking about the ego, right? The ego resists the idea of death. Death is change and transformation. Um, and it resists that idea because the ego is afraid of what is going to happen afterwards. Um, and so I wrote down here um, that what we really fear is the destruction of the personality. It is the ego that sees itself as separate from life because it is only a mask. The ego does not wish to die. It wishes to make itself superior to the universe. Um, when we, uh, how do I want to explain this? So death, okay, so when the death card comes out, this was really important. It is not the literal transformation, but but the moment we remove the mask or the ego to allow the transformation. So death is not, death does not mean a literal transformation. It is the moment that we decide for ourselves, that we, we decide to knock out what the ego is telling us and we decide to see for what the situation, for what it is and to allow that change to, to occur. Usually, like, and I usually tell my clients when the death card comes up, it's like, it's change and transformation. But you have to die to yourself to allow that new thing to be reborn or to be born, right? It's it's like you have to make a little sacrifice in order to achieve something else. Um, and so usually when the death card approaches, it's, it's a reminder to yourself that there's something within you or the situation you're reading about that needs to change. You can't just receive a new thing. You have to give up something that is no longer working for you. And a lot of times the ego doesn't want to do that because it's, it, your ego is fact. Your ego knows the truth. Your ego thinks it knows the truth, but your heart feels what you truly desire. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I feel like that's so confusing. Um... And so I feel like, like, like when the, when the death card comes up for us, we have to examine ourselves and think, okay, what is it that I, that I need to let go of? Right? What is it in this life and in this situation that I need to let go of that is not resonating anymore? That's what that means. So it's not telling you there's change. Change won't happen if you're not going to give something up or if you're not going to die to something or if you're not going to release something. So really important to remember that. <laughs> um... And then I wrote down, we fear death because of the unknown afterwards. We don't know what's going to happen after, right? And change is scary. We don't know what's going to happen after we change something that we're usually used to, a routine or, or a habit. So it, it is. It brings forth fears. 
But if you can see beyond the fears and allow the change and the routines to, to change and, and, and do something different, usually you're going to come up with some more amazing stuff to experience in your life. Um, the chapter, page 104, has a huge, a huge section all about the number 13 and, and how, you know, how that came to be. So I highly recommend you guys read that. I think that that was so good. And then the reversals, which I highlighted in blue, um, the reversals to fear death is to fear change and to not, and not aligning your life to its free potential, to its full potential, Li not living your, sorry, I can't read my own writing. <laughs> <laughs> to fear death is to fear change and not living your life to its full potential. So by you not be willing to change, not willing to give up things that are no longer resonant to you, you're not living your full potential. You are limiting your life. And I already said so earlier, our lives are a speck in this whole expansive energy of the universe. Our lives are barely a hundred years. And to not be willing to change and not be willing to try something new is so sad. It's so limiting. So I read that and I was just like, never want to be like that. Um, and then finally, we get to the temperance. So number 14, the temperance. She starts on page 105. Um, the temperance is moderation, self-control moderation and self-control she is such a peaceful card just even just by looking at her she's peace so you go through the death right you go through something scary the sacrifice and then you see the temperance on the other side this card um it doesn't show but there's i've have a, i have a version of the temperance that shows the rainbow <laughs> and rainbows mean peace and and rainbows mean what did i put down for the rainbow um, peace after the fear of death. Rainbows appear as a sign of peace after the storm. She doesn't have it, but there's, I have a right away version where, she, where there's a huge rainbow over her. Um, and it's pretty much like telling you that everything's going to be okay. <laughs> everything's going to be okay after you go through that crazy change, that crazy loss, that crazy whatever, whatever the death card was resembling in your life. The calm after the storm. Um, I have it in my notes to read the asterisk. Okay, so one of my notes I put categorizing everything and not living the natural flow. Is this the reversal or the negative of the card? So the, the, the temperance is the flow. The temperance is the natural flow of life. And we have, we as human beings, we have the tendency of categorizing everything in our life. This is for this. This is for that. This is for this person. This is for this family only. And we tend to kind of only give portions of ourselves to each category. And so you're not necessarily living the natural flow of life. And I resonated with that because I live a double life or I, I still have a tendency of living a double life. So I have like my tarot stuff that I do pretty much 90% of the time. But for that minuscule 10% when I'm with certain people, I don't live it. So I'm cutting off that flow. And so I really resonated with that because to me, it, you feel it. You do feel that like hiccup, that energetic hiccup in your life when you're, when you're not going with the flow of the, you know, your natural way of living. And so I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are watching this that, that can resonate with that. Like you go through things like you're living double lives or you, um, you, you're, you, maybe you, you work three or four jobs and you're only, you're a certain personality for each job. <laughs> That's a big one too. Um, so the temperance kind of talks about that because she has the flow of the water coming through her and whatnot. So it's just like allowing you the natural flow of life go through the motions. Um, is it truly impossible to deal with life in a constant positive state of mind? Because the temperance is peace. <clears throat> she has a peaceful approach to everything, right? And I wrote that down. I, I go, is it really negative? Is it really possible to, to approach life in a positive manner all the time? And I don't think it is. Um, I think that sometimes, I think that sometimes we have crazy emotions come up and we're frustrated, we're angry, and we should honor those. I think that we shouldn't always be 100% positive. 
Um, but what I highlighted in the book is, is to other people, the temperate person's ability to handle all life's problems with joy appears magical. I highlighted that because it reminded me of like well, the way my father is. And my father would always say, you know, when you have Christ in your life, people will know and they see the change in you and they see the difference in that person. And that person is always so happy and they want to know, why are you so happy? And then you say, because I have Christ in my life, let me share the word with you. And so when I, when I highlighted that, I was like, that's kind of like the temperance essence. It's like the peace after the storm, right? People know you went through something big, but how are you so at peace? Well, because, you know, and so I feel like, I feel like that's almost like, I don't always agree with that because I feel like we need, as much as we should honor being positive and, and full of joy and love and peace, we should also honor our negatives and we should also honor our frustrated moods and stuff. Um, but when you have a calm, a sense of calm and serenity to you, people will, will see it as magical and people will notice it. And I feel like that kind of maybe, maybe this part goes, and maybe I'm reading it wrong, but maybe this part goes hand in hand with like, when you go through the development of all of these other cards that we talked about and you're, you're at that state of the hangman where it's like, I've been there, done that through stuff. And now it's like, I could deal with and roll with the punches a little bit easier than maybe someone who's going through their crisis for the first time. I could see why people would look at us as like, God, how does that not affect you so much? So I feel like it's like a spiritual enlightenment. I feel like temperance is a spiritual enlightenment. You are able to go through something and not let it affect you so hard as if you were, if you were in the full state in your life. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so the rest of the chapter, um, like we talked about the negatives of the temperance. So this indicates a wildness going to extremes. The person lacks inner awareness to know what is appropriate in a situation. The person is not, basically like you're not at peace, right? Acting as a warning that you have allowed your life to become fragmented and you are sliding from one extreme to another indicates failure in the risk and the great task of letting old habits and fears die away in the past. Um, on a simple level, the reverse temperance tells us to calm down and avoid extremes. In its deepest sense, it sends us back to the strength to begin that long, sometimes painful, sometimes frightening, but always essentially joyous process of death and rebirth. So a person who is in the temperance, they usually don't learn their lesson. And so if you're not learning your lesson and you're still going through major extremes and you're still going through your substance abuse or whatever it was that you were trying to tame at the very beginning, you will end up going back to the strength card and going through this inner process all over again. <laughs> and so that's 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 basically the gist of chapter Five. Um, we're 47 minutes in. Oh my God, this video is going to take forever to upload. Um, but I'm glad I got through it. I'm glad I got through it. So I really enjoyed this chapter. I really enjoyed the cards. I feel like the, I have to spend a little bit more time with strength. Um, I, but I, ha I have a sense of understanding this. Like some of you guys will read this and you're not going to know what the fuck it means. Or you're going to just be like, that doesn't make any sense to me. And it's usually not to be rude, but it's usually because you haven't gone through the whole um, taming your beast. And I'm not saying to, I'm not saying that to be, you know, like to, to, to be rude. But if you haven't seen a silver lining if you haven't experienced what it feels like to find the silver lining in an otherwise really crappy situation and experience, and I'm saying like, and, and, and sometimes it, it takes years to finally achieve that. Like for me, it took 13 years to finally come full circle. Um, you won't understand what that means because you haven't done your work yet, but eventually you will. And some people never do their work. They never do their work. And so they're constantly in a cycle. They're in that cycle, right? And I feel like that's why with the Wheel of Fortune, they're so caught up in this cycle that they are the people that are always asking, why does this happen to me? Why is this always happening to me? And if you're one of those people that's always asking, why does this always happen to me? It's because you're not doing the work. 
That's why. Because you're still stuck in that cycle. So <laughs> really, 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 really good chapter. I highly recommend you guys read it. Read it and ha highlight it. And seriously, there's so much symbolism in this chapter. It's insane. Um, but I just wanted to thank you guys, those of you who are still doing this book club with me. I hope you're enjoying it. <clears throat> I'm going to post this video and hopefully you guys get a lot out of it. Sorry if it was confusing. Sorry if I was jumping around. But I do my best. Um, leave comments below if you have your own commentary on the cards that we talked about and we will be starting chapter six, um, Monday. So finish your chapters if you haven't finished it and I will see you guys on Monday. I'll be posting on my Instagram and the Facebook group, um, the prompt for Monday and then have another week of reading and I think this, this week is where the week that we finish the major arcana. I'm pretty sure but we'll see. Um, and anyways, talk to you guys soon. I love you. Bye.